Hello, my name is Lori Caldwell and I'm a compost educator at Stop Waste. And today I want to talk to you about worm composting. Worm composting is a great way to transform your food scraps into a wonderful organic fertilizer for your indoor and outdoor plants. And because it's contained in a small bin, it's great for those who have limited space. Worm composting is a lot of fun. It's great for families with kids. And then you end up with a lot of finished castings that you can share with your family and friends. So this is my worm bin. Look how beautiful the finished product is. These are castings, also known as worm poop. Very high in nitrogen. And then as you can probably see here in the screen, there are, they're kind of hidden right now, but we have a ton of compost critters in here that helps with this whole entire process. And then of course, some lovely bedding. They're red wigglers. These are the type that we're looking for and they lay eggs. So if we're lucky, we might actually find a worm egg in here as well. This is a worm egg. This egg may contain to one to many potential worms in your worm bin. They're lemon shaped, light yellow color, but they do get darker as they mature. So worm composting is gonna be contained in a bin. Now you can go out and buy one, but we always think it's gonna be easier and definitely cheaper to make your own. Now our bin is made out of a plastic tub. And when you're shopping for your own bin, you're looking for three things. You're looking for shallow, opaque, and you want it to have a lid. When it comes to placement of your worm bin, you're gonna to wanna to place it where it's gonna have easy access, you're gonna to wanna to keep it out of the elements, and you actually wanna keep it out of the sunshine as well. Worms generally like their temperature between about 59 and 77 degrees. For me, actually the best place for me to put my worm bin is in my kitchen, right next to where I prep food. So when the time comes to actually build the bin, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to drill some holes in the side for air. All of our compost critters require air in order to live and breathe, so that's kind of important. Not too big on the holes. I would prefer you do more holes and small ones. Another great best practice is to line your worm bin with a piece of cardboard. It helps absorb any excess moisture. So our next step is providing bedding for our worms. Now bedding is important for insulation as well as moisture control. So here are some great examples. We have, of course, good old fashioned newspaper, shredded cardboard, and moistened coconut coir. Now if you want to add shredded newspaper to your worm bin, I always recommend that you hand shred it into long strips. Now I'm going to moisten it and I'm gonna go ahead and line my bin with it, about one to two inches. When we're talking about how damp it needs to be, we're looking as damp as a wrung out sponge. And then I'm just gonna place it here on the bottom of my worm bin. We've already set up our bin, we have our moist bedding. Our next thing is gonna be the worms. We're looking for red wigglers. Uh, we're looking for about a pound of them. And uh, we always recommend that you try to find them at your local nursery or your urban farm store. So now we have our one pound of worms. We're gonna go ahead and put them right on top of the moist bedding. I'm just gonna leave them in a lump. They are gonna find their way around their new home. Okay, let's go ahead and put this here in the center. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put a layer of moist paper on top of my worms. And then on top of that, a layer of dry paper. Now's the time to uh, feed our worms. I always find it's always best that if I'm prepping for my meals, then I can separate the things that I'm going to eat and the things that I'm gonna go ahead and give to my worms. So we're having lettuce for dinner tonight. So I'm gonna cut this little section off and I'm gonna save that for my worms for later. So what do worms eat? Let's check out what I have. Coffee grounds, eggshells, coffee filters, tea bags, fruit and vegetable scraps. So what we don't feed our worms is cooked food, bones, meats, citrus, anything spicy like garlic or peppers, definitely not any dairy. So before putting them in my bin, I like to give everything a really good chop to break it up. Worms have small mouths, so it's always best to make things smaller for them. So we've prepped up our food scraps. 
I have about a quart. I like to start my worms off with that. I'm gonna give them that food and give them about a week to get situated in their new home. When it's time to feed these worms, we're gonna go ahead and pull back the bedding and then place the food right next to the worms. And every month, I like to change the location of where I feed my worms in the bin. So after your food has completely disappeared and your bedding is pretty unrecognizable, it's time to harvest from your bin. We always recommend that you harvest your entire bin at least once a year. Now, if you need a small quantity of castings, you can always grab a handful out of your worm bin. But if you're looking for more, we're gonna talk about the migration method. So first of all, I'm gonna stop feeding my worms for about a couple of weeks, give them a chance to get hungry. And then I'm gonna move all my castings from one side of the bin to the other and leave one portion of that empty. In the empty spot, I'm gonna rebuild my worm bin. I'm gonna do wet paper, food, wet paper, and then dry paper on top. With the idea being that those hungry worms are gonna migrate from the castings to where their new food is. And now you can harvest the castings that are virtually worm free. When it comes to storing your castings, the key is to make sure that they don't dry out or they don't get too wet. So I like to usually store my castings in plastic buckets. I usually put like a loose lid or a, um, a light lid on top of it in order to keep it nice and viable. Now eventually um, they may dry out and the viability may decrease, but the castings are still gonna be very good. There are lots of ways to use your finished castings. There's side dressing around existing plants, watering your plants by making a dilution of the castings, and then there's always compost tea. Now we're gonna use worm castings a lot different than we would with our basic compost. Basic compost itself is more of a soil amendment. Our worm castings are actually a fertilizer, very high in nutrition, especially nitrogen. So when you use them, you're gonna use them a lot more sparingly. Now when it comes to maintaining your worm bin, the secret is actually the addition of dry bedding into your bin. Now dry bedding is gonna help prevent a lot of your common issues with the worm bin, some of them being excess moisture, unburied food, or even fruit flies. So constant addition of dry paper is gonna prevent all of those issues. Now that you know how easy, fun, and rewarding worm composting can be, we hope you go out and get yourself a bin. If you have any issues, we at Stop Waste are here to support you on your composting journey. You can visit Stop Waste website for more information on how to get started and check out our other gardening and composting videos too.